You are listening to the Intelligent Vocalist Podcast, episode 102. Welcome to the Intelligent Vocalist with John Henney. This is the podcast dedicated to help you be a smarter, better, more informed singer. And now, your host for the Intelligent Vocalist, John Henney. Hey there, this is John Henney. Welcome back to another episode of The Intelligent Vocalist. I do so appreciate you spending your precious listening time with me. Okay, I just got back from a uh, small vacation, first vacation I've taken in a while. I can't really travel too easily. Uh, I travel for business, but for pleasure, it gets a little hard because my wife and I have uh, five bulldogs, which makes no sense not even to me, but uh, we have three English bulldogs and two French bulldogs. And these, these dogs are like owning Ferraris. Um, It's, it's, they're not set and forget. They've got all their little special needs and routines. And one of our bulldog Frenchies is special needs and the other Frenchies getting older. So uh, we had to hire uh, a dog sitter um, thank you, Darlene. You did a fantastic job. And a whole lot of things. And our music academy had to be all closed down uh, for the quick summer break. But I managed to get away to the eastern high Sierras uh, here in California, um, near the California-Nevada border, close to, backs up close to Yosemite. And it's just some of the most stunning scenery you've ever seen. Um, I think it was the Mac version uh, OS High Sierra or Sierra. And the, the pictures, the picture they used was taken uh, right in the area I stayed. And all the famous Ansel Adams photos, if you're familiar with his work, uh, were all taken right in that area. And it, it just, the, the grandeur of nature and to just stare at a, a mountain lake or, or a stream, or even the mountain itself, and to try and take that all in. It, it just, the, the brain almost has to flatline in order to absorb the beauty of what you are looking at. And all of your uh, nagging inner dialogue is quieted amidst that beauty. And just the, the, st- stunning experience of nature. So if you find yourself really grinding away, and I will get into this on this episode on uh, how much you should practice, but if you kind of find yourself grinding, getting stuck in a rut, you, you got to take a break. And man, there's, there's something about nature, and they've even done neurological studies on this. There is something about nature that, that really uh, calms us and, and helps put things into perspective. And that internal dialogue can be not just destructive, but it's exhausting to be captured by thought every moment of the day and to just be in this constant dialogue with yourself that the opportunity to just see something outside of yourself that's so much bigger and it just calms, it just dials down the noise and I highly, highly recommend it. All right, this is a question I get asked all the time. How much should I practice? And I don't have, I'm sorry to disappoint um, with this clickbait title, I don't have a specific answer for you because everyone is different. And this ultimately is a question you need to answer for yourself. Now, it's very tempting to equate time on the clock, minutes ticking off in the practice room with improvement, right? We want to make that association that, well, if I practiced 45 minutes today and then I practice an hour the next day, well, that hour is better than the 45 minutes. And then if the hour is better then an hour and a half is even better than that. And that's not necessarily true. First off, you have to realize that the voice is unlike any other instrument. It It's not an instrument that responds well to mindlessness. And by that, if you're working, let's say you're learning to play the guitar, and I will do this. I'm a a pretty lousy guitar player, but I sure do enjoy it. 
But I will just sit with an unplugged electric guitar and as I'm watching TV, I'll run different scale patterns or practice shifting between some tricky chords. And I can do this while not totally paying attention. It's just I'm trying to drill in this muscle memory because I don't need the precision. Uh, well, let me take that back. You do need precision with the fingers, but it's not the same as the voice. If I'm a little sloppy in my guitar technique, sure, it, it, it's going to come out when I'm trying to play something very, very quick or complicated. But for the most part, it's not the biggest deal. Whereas in the voice, little small imbalances will bite you almost constantly. So you have to have a greater awareness when you're practicing. Also, um, we don't have direct control of these muscles the way and awareness. We don't have the direct awareness the way we do of our fingers. So the, the voice requires a different level of concentration. And a lot of what you're doing with the voice is really hooking up these abstract thoughts of pitch and intensity and vocal balance to the, the long meandering nerve that wanders down to your larynx. You've got to strengthen that highway. So the ability to focus and concentrate is really important in the voice. And again, these micro balances, whereas maybe your guitar technique's a little sloppy, they're actually st going to start to cause physical issues with the voice, uh, especially through your transition, if you're going into the shout reflex and singing too long and too hard in that condition, it can really start to cause problems. Um, where you can start to damage your voice. So I do want to caution that. Also, because the voice is made of flesh, tissue, human muscle, um, it is, it's not like a fixed instrument. It's going to change from day to day and hour to hour, depending on how much you've had, what you've eaten, uh, what you've had to drink, how quickly or how long has it been since you've had something to eat or drink, uh, how much rest you've had, are you stressed? All of these things are going to affect the instrument. And it's not an instrument you can sit and work on for eight hours a day. You'll read about virtuoso mu musicians who can practice many, many hours a day, whereas the voice, you're really pushing it uh, beyond a couple of hours. It's going to be diminishing returns, and you can actually start to really seriously exhaust the instrument and possibly create some issues with the instrument. And if you're not practicing correctly, you can quickly tire out the voice and begin to swell the voice. So any of these hours that you set for yourself or time in the practice room is conditional, and it's conditional on how you are feeling. It's conditional on how you're doing it, um, if you're able to pay attention. Uh, if you feel your attention start to wander, you need, you need a break. Also, in any endeavor, just as I talked about going and getting a break up in the uh, Sierras, just every day, constantly, and, and the constant grind is not always the best thing. It, it is a good idea to take breaks here and there and get some distance from the instrument, get some distance from your practicing so that you can begin to process and really think about it. They, they talk about it uh, in the mind as an incubation period when you're wrestling with a problem and your problem may be how to improve or what you need to work on. Rather than constantly going at it with a sledgehammer, this incubation period is if you take a break from it, there's the idea that the subconscious mind can work on the problem. You can get perspective on your voice. You can get a clear idea of maybe what your strengths and weaknesses are and what you should really focus on. And sometimes this needs to happen away from the practice room and, and taking a break from the voice. So you should be aware of that as well. Now, having said that, as a serious student of the voice, I would look at, if you are able, breaking your practice sessions into two sessions. So rather than doing one long, let's say, 90-minute session, you're better off doing two 45-minute sessions, one earlier in the day, one later in the day. However, you will know when you tend to be at your best. If you're somebody that really crashes and burns 
in, in the mid-afternoon, say, or post-lunch, say around 3 o'clock, but you catch your second wind again at 5, maybe do your, your later session at 5 rather than 3. Um, if you're not very strong in the morning, and the problem with the voice is you can't really just w- get up right out of bed and start working it. You need to be awake for a little bit. Um, but I find, and for most people, working things in the morning, you tend to be a little fresher and more alert. Also, if it's coming to your second practice and you're just exhausted and fried, it is okay to skip. Don't push yourself on this instrument. Um, so I would make the earlier session more of the priority. And then if you can, the later session is the gravy. I would start off if you're a beginning singer. Um, I would practice, make sure you're practicing about 20 minutes, um, just to get yourself going. And again, you want practice to become a habit. You don't want to have to think about this or talk yourself into it. It's just something you do like brushing your teeth. Once that begins to get established, then I'd go to a half hour and then I would push it to 45 minutes. A 45 minute session of singing is pretty darn good. Um, Now, in your practice sessions, you want to make sure that for every, every, let's say, you're working your voice for four or five minutes, then take 30 seconds or a minute of vocal rest. Or maybe, you know, you're working on on strength, stop. After maybe seven, eight minutes, you're starting to feel it, stop, give yourself a minute, maybe then do some vocalizing through the straw just to kind of make sure everything's limber and easing up. This instrument is not going to respond to a heavy-handed approach. You can't take a sledgehammer to the voice. You cannot force the voice. The other part of it is, again, is the mental part. You have to be in a really good mental place. If you're stressed, if you're getting frustrated, step away. In poker, they talk about it as tilt. And for a while, I was actually, uh, I was playing a fair amount of poker. It was something that interested me. I wanted to get good. And I would tell myself, oh, I'm going to be really disciplined and I'm not going to, I'm not going to tilt. I'm not going to get angry and start making bad decisions at the poker table just because of emotion. And lo and behold, you take a couple of what they call bad beats. And a bad beat is somebody who stayed, you've got a winning hand. And you're betting very strong, and somebody keeps calling you with absolute garbage that they're holding. However, as the cards come out the board, they hit the the one card that would make them beat you right on at the last card that comes out, the river card, and they beat you. And when they show you what they have, and you're so furious at how not only how bad their play was and, and how poorly they played that hand but also just the horrible luck that you endured and the money that should be rightfully yours going to them, uh, you get upset. And when you're upset, you start making bad decisions. And when you are frustrated and upset with the voice, you're going to make bad decisions. You need to step away. So always be monitoring where you are mentally. You really need to be in in a good, positive place. You need to be in a place where you're not preoccupied with other things, where you can get into that Zen experience of just being aware of what things feel like, being aware of what you're paying attention to, what you're listening for, why you are doing that exercise, what the exercise is fixing, you should always be aware of what an exercise does. And if you're not, and if you're taking lessons, stop your teacher and go, why are you giving me this exercise? Why does this exercise do what it does? What do you want this exercise to do in my voice? You need that understanding. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask questions like crazy. Um, So always be monitoring where you are mentally. Always be monitoring how the voice feels. Be respectful of taking rests. Respect your instrument. It, it really is. You're, you're working like an athlete. Athletes don't overdrive themselves. They have a whole team that makes sure that they're working in optimal conditions for optimal periods of time. So you're going to have to be that person for yourself. You ultimately need to be your own voice teacher. Even if you're taking lessons, you're going to spend more time singing away from the teacher than you are with the teacher bottom line. So you always have to have this awareness and you have to increase your knowledge. If you can build yourself up to two 45-minute sessions a day, that is pretty darn strong. 
If you're going to go to an hour, I'd maybe do a longer session uh, in the morning, maybe an hour in the, the earlier session, and then the later one could be a half hour, 45 minutes. If they're going to be uh, uh, weighted one way or the other, p- pick the time that's better for you. For me, the earlier session would be better. If you really come to life in the evening, make that your longer session. When you're practicing, and I've talked about this before, just kind of have a bit of a, a regimen in that you're you're going to warm up first. Warm ups are usually going to be those what they call semi occluded uh, or partially blocked exercises, like through the straw or or through bubbling lips, tongue trills, things like that. Get it where the voice starts feeling warmed up. Then start working on different issues. Whether you're working on maybe extending your range or your vibrato, your sustains, your tone, and always save working on just sheer power um, for when everything else is working well. And there may be days you don't get to that part of the practice, and it's okay. The voice is not always ready for for full-on belting, if you will. And then you can do song work. And you really want to be aware of your song work, whether you're going to spend time learning a song or you're going to uh, research new material or you're going to pull out an old song and see if you can improve on it. Or maybe there's a section of a song. This is a song you're not looking to perform or audition with, but there's parts of the song that you know work your voice in ways that your voice should be worked. These um, Piece parts of the song make you confront vocal issues that you know need to be fixed. So they, they become very good training songs. And give yourself, it's good to take one day of rest a week. If you can do this six days a week, you're, you're going to really improve. I will tell you, if you're doing two 45-minute sessions, six days a week, and you're working with a really good vocal coach or voice teacher... Uh, at least once a week, man, you're going to really improve. Um, and if you're if you know what your strengths and weaknesses are, and if you're you're working on the right things, because that's the other part. If you're if you're just practicing to practice, if you're just practicing to tick minutes off of that clock, and you're not working on the right things, it's it's detrimental. You're going in the wrong direction. And even though I've given you these minute counts, don't think that, oh, I'm doing 42, 45 minute sessions a day, so I'm going to be golden. Uh-uh. It's how, what you do in those 45 minutes. Because I will tell you, 15 minutes of working on what you should be working on and doing it in a very aware, um, controlled manner where you're you're paying attention to what you should be doing and you're doing things correctly is worth way more than an hour of garbage practice. Um, don't think vocal practice is just walking into the room and starting to sing songs. You've, you've got to work up to that. Or just singing songs you've sung a thousand times before. That's fun. I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to sing songs for fun. But I also encourage you to do really focused, deliberate work. So that's how much you should practice. If you can do two 45-minute sessions a day, six days a week, you're looking really good. But do not tie it to the clock. Always be aware of your own limitations. So, And in the beginning, that's probably too much, especially if you're working through technical issues still. Um, that's going to be too much. You've, you've got to just give yourself smaller practice sessions until you get over specific technical issues. And if you are prone to yelling, pulling chest, over compressing, forcing the voice, yeah, you really, really want to be careful in terms of those minutes ticking off. Hey, if you want to know more about me, go to johnhenny.com. I've got some different science courses uh, for voice teachers and singers if you're interested in that sort of thing. I also have an online teacher training program. Uh, It's a whole certification course that will take you from never having taught a lesson before to being a pretty solid voice teacher. And there's also an advanced teacher component there. Uh, It's called Contemporary Voice Teacher Academy. At the menu on my website, you can just click on the top where it says teacher training. You can get uh, more information on that. 
and follow me on Instagram. I'm doing these little videos of vocal tips and I'm putting out uh, at least two or three a, a week. Uh, my handle is uh, at John Henny Vocals. Is that, is that what you call Instagram as a handle? Or is that for CB radio? Or does anyone even know what that is anymore? Breaker, breaker, 10-4. All right. And until next time, two better singing. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.